Hello everybody, today I wanted to bring you guys a little bit of a video about some of the issues with Gwent uh, that I haven't really touched on. I talked about artifacts before, uh, I've talked about the dumb design of stuff like Reveal in the past as well, but today uh, I wanted to bring my good friend Game King, uh, the, I'm sure you know him, the well-known uh, pro card gamer uh, himself, to bring his, uh, you know, views on the, the topics that we're going to talk about. Uh, so here he is. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Thanks. I'm doing good. Yeah, so uh, pretty much these are some problematic cards, I think, and you know, Game King also thinks should probably be changed. And we've got some solutions and suggestions as to, you know... Yeah, we have looked watching. over the entire deck builder. Yeah, looked over every single card, basically, and yeah, we have categorized um, them in four categories. And yeah, we will suggest changes and point out cards that are badly designed or yeah, should get changed in our opinions. Mm -hmm. So with that, there's sort of four groups of cards that are really problematic uh, in our eyes. And the first are just dumb cards that exist, which, and what I mean by that is effectively, if you know about them, if you know they're in your opponent's deck, you can deal with them a lot of the time. Uh, if you don't, then they're going to be a problem. Adzakov has brought up some of this stuff uh, in a recent tweet that he made. Uh, and, he, and some of those things were Spear, Shoop, Dragon Stream. We're going to get into that. Uh, stuff. Uh, so basically dumb cards that you yeah don't see coming, they can wreck you. And also there's a few cards that are just maybe not well designed in our opinion. Uh, and the next category of cards is effectively the high RNG, high variance that isn't really fun or you know interactive uh, that people are playing at the moment. Uh, and there's you know a few of them that we'll talk about. After that we've also got RNG cards that aren't really played, stuff like the create stuff. Gascon, uh, whatever, uh, and yeah, while those aren't a problem right now, we'll get into why we think they should be changed, because uh, they're not, you know, a good thing for the game necessarily. And finally, we have Reveal as a whole as an archetype, which still does exist, you know, even though people aren't playing at the moment because it's not very good, uh, and yeah, we want to give our thoughts on that as well. So, with that yeah. being said, let's talk about the first group of cards, which are the quote-unquote dumb design i guess you can call it um, yeah. cards. so what have we got the most prominent card is probably three hand i think we should that yeah well I, oh god i don't know how he's spelled there we go trehern so yeah he's pretty popular in Novgard. and let's explain why this is a problem do you want to team king yeah um i mean four for seven they nerfed it by one point in the most recent patch but the problem is if you play a deck with high provision cards in it, and your opponent plays Trehan and maybe discards your Shoop, your Unicorn, or your like big finisher, then I expect you to be really salty <laughs> because your <laughs> opponent just played one card to destroy your win condition, and that's not fun, and also maybe too strong. Um, also, a lot of average is in this card because you either don't discard anything because otherwise you would fin your opponent's deck. Like if you only look at three bad cards, for example, or you discard your opponent's win condition and win the game, maybe. Yeah. Off on that. Yeah. Really high variance. So, yeah. And it's also worth noting that uh, I was even watching McBeard's podcast today and they were talking about this card being a problem. And the other thing to note is it's good when your opponent has a bad hand, right? So Except, not only yeah. you're not only punished for not drawing your good card, you're then punished because they get rid of it. So yeah, if it, you already have your unicorns in hand, they can't discard it anymore. So yeah, so it's, it's like double. It feels even worse than it should feel, right? Um, yeah, and also the, it also punishes drawing it later. If you top the gate in the last round, you get a four point card. If you have it in the first round, you can use it as carryover. So um, also, if you draw the card itself later on, the words uh, it gets. Uh, Yep, so all in all, just high randomness and not fun for really either player. Uh, and yeah, okay. So how would yeah, we and change And we also it? have a fix, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have a solution. And what, what do you think we should do, Game King? I think in my opinion, we should make it look at the opponent's X cards, make it three or five or four. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's and it. then make it five points for five, for example. Yep. Five points for five. Look at the opponent's five cards, three cards. Mm -hmm. Whatever is balanced. <laughs> so you, you know, pay a fair points for provisions cost, and then you get a bit of information. You get to look at what's coming up, and you can maybe play around the cards that you see. Maybe gain a little yeah. bit of an edge in that way, but it's not gonna, you know, hinder your opponent's game plan at all. And 
yeah, not going to be too exactly. Strong yeah. You can too look if your opponent has certain cards in the hand if they play certain cards in their deck. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you okay. can also track the cards if you look at the top three cards, and then you see what what he mulliganed away by looking at your opponent's hand. And then you can maybe make a read if his hand is bad or good, and then you can bleed him on or dry pass. You can make a lot of stuff out of those yeah, uh, yeah. information to gain. You can yeah, just make it maybe even look at more than three cards, maybe look at four cards. Yeah. Yeah, just make it like balance in some way. Yeah. Five for five provision sounds yeah, yeah not too bad. I mean, so you could also lot... maybe have it, I don't know, do something wacky, like put stuff to the bottom of the deck. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. that. Uh, we talked about it a bit and we said Meh, it wouldn't really fix the problem necessarily. With yeah, it would only fix the problem against Skellige maybe. But... Yeah. No. yeah, so there's our solution. I think it's probably okay. Uh, so what's the next card that we want to talk about here? So the next card is Uncreate Marauder. <laughs> what do you think about that card, Freddy? Okay, well, I think everyone knows Marauder's a bit of a silly one to have to play against. Uh, it basically rewards you for getting red coin uh, and playing it you know, into your opponent's first play, or if you're playing spears or artifacts or whatever, it rewards you for drawing those cards at the same time as this. So pretty much it's just good or bad dependent on what coin flip result you got or what cards you drew. So it's kind of really random and really strong when it's you know working, yeah. really terrible when it's not. Uh, for and if you card. can't play it on your first play, then you maybe have to risk playing it after you already have units. Yeah. And then it's from minus two to plus six points. So mm -hmm. after you, uh, like if you have units on your board, then it's just super random, either minus two points or plus six. So um, yeah, that's really bad then. Yeah, it leads, leads to some situations where you maybe mm -hmm. feel like you have to take the risk. Kind of not a good mm -hmm. feeling for either player if it goes one way or the other, right? So. How would we change this? Um, I think we have a pretty good solution for this one. Yes, we have a really good solution. So we'll Let you explain it for you. Okay, I'll explain it. Uh, so, four provisions is fine, and I think you want to keep this card in the sort of uh, flavor and the idea that it's trying to, you know, pursue with its ability, which is damaging units, not only your opponents, but yours a little bit, right? To enable Bloodthirst mm -hmm. and uh, the self-wounding archetype in Skellige. So, to allow that, we we could just change this to three points for provisions, uh, deal one damage to a friendly unit, and then deal two damage, uh, deal one damage to two enemy units, right? So effectively, it would be four exactly. points for four provisions, but also enabling bloodthirst and self wound at the same time, um, and helping yeah. those archetypes. Yeah. Then it would be really amazing, yeah, because four for four is okay balance and yeah you can activate your own self wound cards while at the same time activating bloodlust or killing some small engines which you maybe have damaged already or finish off with Drach hero power and yeah would, would do both at the same time and not have rng and would also not be too strong on red coin yeah and important to note that yeah the red coin issue you would have to make it so it has to damage the unit first on your side yes before it can damage the other ones. There might even be other Skellige cards that do that. I don't even know uh, in the yeah. game right now, but whatever. Um, so that's probably how we'd fix this one. It's just a bit toxic at the moment to play with yes, and yeah. against. I, in fact, like when you're playing it, it maybe even feels worse than when you play against it, right? Because you have to always yeah. be going, oh, I need to play this in round Yeah, two, and then you or, maybe uh, miss the shots on an immune yeah. thing. So yeah, it's just... It's just not a cool one. So yeah, it's just not a cool one. Yeah. Take the RNG out of that. Take the coin flip dependency out. Uh, and that should be good. And you keep the yeah, you keep the flavor, you keep the the way it was meant to design. It was meant to activate both cell phone and blood for, uh, first. So yeah, keep everything the do, same. Keep everything the same. And, and viable and yeah, okay, cool. So next card that's uh, Dumbo. Uh, there's a couple. We've got basically uh, Spear actually, which is a big issue, uh, right? Because it's artifacts and artifact removal and the 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 binary nature of those sort of stuff. So we're yeah, not going to talk about that here, I don't think. Um, I did do a video on what I thought about artifacts, but there's also other opinions out there. I mean, you can just change how Spear works and then that's probably not a problem uh, if you don't even want to address artifacts as a whole. Uh, yeah. Apart from Spear, we also have Weather, which we don't really want to touch on either because it's another whole thing. I think Weather, I don't know about you, Game King, but I think Weather needs a bit it's more... It's also the binary everything if you have to clear yeah. yet. No. Um, yeah. And that could probably be helped just by addressing weather in the similar way to how it was in the old days, right? Uh, yes. Like where 
you have a lot of weather maybe in a deck and a, you know every deck maybe has a weather clear or two and even if weather gets cleared it doesn't it's not the end of the world for the player who played the weather and even if it doesn't get cleared they don't get a huge amount of value uh, yes. and then it's sort of fair for each person right um, right now that's not the case but we don't want to get too you know in depth on that issue that's just another card that's kind of there need to be more weather cards and synergies and weather clears and whatnot to really uh you know uh solve that so the other yeah. thing that we want to talk about uh and that we have a uh, solution for is dragon's dream novellan uh and even Re novellan regis which is kind of a problem at the moment and it's actually yeah novellan yeah, in our opinion, the problem is in novellan yeah rather than the other cards that it synergize with so yeah i mean what's the problem with it game king explain yeah i think the problem is the word it moves all units i think moving all units is just i mean too much in my opinion a good solution for this would be yeah two units or more three units sure yep yeah. i think that yeah and the problem is it, it retained its old ability i heard molegion say this it's a very good point uh you know novellan used to move he used to do this right he moved all units on a row to a random row uh, and that was fine when it was three rows but now that we're two rows the effect is yeah. just kind of bonkers and yeah True. unbalanced yeah. and whatever so this is more of a balance issue i guess rather than uh you know yeah, it's a balance this, issue yeah. rather, and i mean to an extent all these cards are balanced incorrectly maybe as well but this more so than the others and i suppose with dragon's dream the issue with that card is you know you maybe see it coming and you can deal with it or you don't see it coming and you get wrecked by it uh, but really, it's Novellan that's underpinning that and allowing that card to be so strong in its best case, uh, you know. Uh, which yeah, is if Novellan one. only moves two units, then, mm -hmm. yeah, the Drain Stream might be like six or nine points less and you can and still win the game. You can still outpoint your opponent. Sure. So, yeah, some change there. Yeah, moving less units, maybe even upping the provisions or even just yeah. changing the ability altogether. You could even do that, I guess. Uh, yeah. But... It's, way. Know, it's a cool effect there's cars with movement and having a little bit more movement isn't necessarily a bad thing so yeah that's pretty much uh thoughts on novellan should be changed a little bit too strong now we want to talk about effectively all the really high uh just pure rng cards i guess you could call them that are being played at the moment um yeah shoop probably is the most <laughs> prominent one, right <laughs> the biggest defender shoop yeah this guy is so cool. yeah <laughs> I've heard all sorts of horror stories of people getting, you know, massively lucky things happen. Charming their own unit to their opponent, yeah, like and that too. donating <laughs> points. Exactly, exactly. So basically, yeah, what's the problem with Shoop? Game game? Yeah. I mean, the problem is Shoop has too much RNG. <laughs> more than before, more than in all. Yep, and that yep. is just the problem. Yeah, there's no other way to say it, right? Yeah, I mean, the real problem with Shoop is it allows you to win the game if you get lucky, uh, even if maybe you are playing worse than the opponent if you made a mistake previously or whatever, right? The difference between it doing really well and not doing really well sometimes can, you know, decide a game, uh, and that's not a great feeling. And it's also so versatile that you can't really play around all the potential options, especially when you factor in the randomness associated with getting, you know, any one option. Yeah. You the, you the go for an option, and if you don't get it, you get punished even more, and then you lose. Yeah, like both players aren't can't even play around what's going to happen. Like neither one knows, you know, what they can yeah. they can do. So much is uncertain. Yeah, neither one can hit. Yeah. So you kind of just have to wing it, and not a great feeling for either player, I think. And it's kind of a shame that it's viable, you know, competitively. While it is a cool card and all that, uh, probably shouldn't. Yeah, be flavor so like the right. shoop also opens the cakes. <laughs> it's fine so the card should be in the game but it should either be reworked or banned from pro, pro ladder yeah. yeah i mean we have we have kind of a solution although shoop's kind of hard because it's the yeah. kind of card that you never really want to be viable uh just because it's got that sort of big fun factor and not i guess uh it doesn't seem like it would be a competitive card you know what i mean so our solution yeah. what would that be game king yeah, it was kind of never meant to be a competitor. And our solution would be um, instead of the five options of Mage, Hunter, and Knight, like after you chose uh, the option, what to go first, you have only three options. So you can always um, get the choice you want. And then the question is, yeah, then it would be way too. And you 
obviously have to balance it again, like maybe make knight to six points or increase the provision card uh, cost. And the options themselves also should have no to little RNG um, because shoot mage, um, it's just ridiculous. Like charm either unit can charm your um, biggest dudes to your opponent's spot so yeah. it can donate your opponent's <laughs> And you might fine. think that's you might think yeah. it's fine because whatever, no one ever picks that option. It's too high yeah, variant. But, but you have yeah. to sometimes. You have to go, oh, yeah. whatever. And then maybe like one out yeah. of whatever games you just win. Yeah, one out of like, like a... not even that unlikely. Maybe yeah. ten percent. You win the game. Yeah, yeah and it, it's that's just, ridiculous. Yeah, it feels a bit silly. Should not be in the game. Yeah. Those high RNG factors. Um, yeah, I and mean, just that would be a possible solution, but. Yeah, I mean, if you want it to be competitive, then yeah, just take out the then RNG. Make this, if not, if you want to not change the card, then you make would make it really bad, to... I guess, um, or ban it. Really ban bad it. or ban it, yeah. That's and it. that way, I think, yeah, competitive people are going to be happy, and yeah, hopefully, people who like Shoop will be as well. Okay, yeah. so that's Shoop. What do we have next as our really high uh, sort of RNG stuff? Um, I think we have. Or are we out? I think we are out already. We're out yeah. of playable RNG stuff, yep. Yeah, okay. but bless we are out. <laughs> oh no, we've got bribery, yeah. bribery. Oh, we got bribery, ah. Oh. Which is... We don't really have much to say about bribery. We think this card yeah, should great. probably just be reworked because it's the create mechanic, which a lot of you, uh, I'm sure, know how, you know, we as Gwen... Yeah, we also like... Yeah. We kept it from the midwinter patch with <laughs> introduced create. Yeah. Um, we still have create. Um, I think it's still not good for the game. Yeah, drop it. Yeah, rebalance I, it. To be honest, the thing mm -hmm. is, create isn't that common, you know, in decks and in uh, the meta these days, and it hasn't been for a while. And that's probably why, you know, you know, it's not the biggest issue, uh, and that's why we've talked about the other stuff already. It's more of a problem. But bribery is an example of a create card that has seen play. And, yeah, and, it, and it was really toxic. It's yeah. really toxic. Yeah, exactly. Creating old spear tips. <laughs> and creating, yeah. I mean, it's just the uncertainty of it. Like, you never know how much you will get out of it. Your opponent passes five points up. Okay. Do I, do I play bribery or not? Do I get the five points or not? So, yeah, and if well, you don't get it, you lose the game. On the... If you get it, it's fine. Yeah. Just forces you to gamble, and yeah. your opponent can't play around it either, really. I mean, they're going to play around every card in their own deck. Not, not really going to happen, is yeah, it? So, um, yeah, so create, we don't think, should really be in the game. Uh, and yeah, we wanted to talk about bribery first. But of course, there are a ton of create cards that are still around. They're just not really viable. Stuff like Uma uh, and Aguara True Form. The stones, the space stones. The, the rune stones, exactly. So we think all of those should realistically just be reworked. Because right now, they're not even being played. Yeah, like uh, you I've never seen any rune. In 2000 Gwent games. Yeah. <laughs> like, I played like 2000 games in the last three or four months and I've seen zero. So, like, why even have those cards if they are like, and um, zero played? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe Arena's a, th a place where they are, but yeah, maybe even arena. then, yeah. I mean, just why not have cards with more interesting effects or more synergies going on or something, you know, to spice that aspect of play up, even if they are seeing yeah. play. And if, if they are, then there's randomness going on and that may not feel good etc so yeah I, th I think create should probably just be reworked create altogether. in general yeah. should be reworked and just you know it doesn't have to be a mechanic i mean i can understand maybe it took a lot of time and effort to implement but at the end of the day if it's not working out then it's not working out and should be replaced with something else uh, yeah so yeah that's create and that leads us on to kind of our last really high rng topic which is reveal and the reveal archetype um, I wonder if I can just type in reveal and literally get, I think I can, right? Get all the reveal yeah. stuff, so. <laughs> they changed reveal in Homecoming. It used to, you used to be able to reveal. To US. Yeah, you used to be able to reveal your opponent's cards that they had in hand, and then your cards as well, and maybe your cards when they were, were revealed could do something special, like Foot Soldier would pop out of your hand when you revealed it, for example, and draw you another card. Uh, nowadays, it's just you reveal a card from the enemy deck and then there's a random effect often associated. Happening after death, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so i mean yeah it was obvious I, I mean this was one of my first complaints about homecoming even was reveal getting so gutted uh, and yeah just made to be a complete yeah. rework 
reveal in general, just go back to the old reveal. That would be a solution. Um, yeah, the old reveal was perfectly fine, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't too strong. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting enough. It was a unique mechanic to Nilfgaard. You can reveal your opponent's cards to then know how you will. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that was the, yeah, the uh, uh, but yeah. right, yeah, right now it's it's making like right no now it's just it. maybe I get more points than I should. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so, I play under stated cards. Yeah. yeah, so it's not viable. I don't think anyone would be happy if it was right now because it's not. It's kind of toxic and not fun to play with or against. So it's I kind think... of the most toxic thing. <laughs> yeah. So really, just yeah, redesign this stuff. Maybe go back to the old ways. I think yeah, everyone was happy with me. old reveal, right? Um, and that way you can have more cards that are playable, more variety in deck building and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah. Exactly. So I the think that's... Has... Yeah, what? I think there were like two or three cards we didn't mention that are not played that also should see change. Oh, yeah. That were like cards which um, should get truths. We have ah, two yeah, cards which should get truths that are Rot Tosser and Ispel of Hage. Mm-hmm. Um, those two cards should get truths because um, you shouldn't be able to draw cards into both players' hand after the opponent passed. So, I mean, you, we all know that your opponent passed, you draw a card, even though he has already passed and, and without truth and destroy all the big dudes of your yeah, opponent. Yeah. That is really um, not interactive and I dislike those mechanics. Yeah, it basically, uh, especially with Isbell, it like, punishes you for not knowing they have it, right? And not, yeah. you, you know, not then favoring getting last say over not getting it, um, and yeah, not and saving then... your removal for it. If you know about it, you can play around it, and then it sucks. And if you, yes. and with Rot Tosser, it's just, I mean, Rot Tosser's not even necessarily strong anymore because they nerfed the provisions. But it would still be a nice, you know, way to make it viable but not strong is to give it truce, and then you can yeah, make you back... the provisions yeah. back down, right? Yeah, back down to five, make it give it truce. Then it also like on red, kill any unit of your choice. Because if you opponent pass, you can't kill any unit anymore. Um, truth means if neither player has passed, so for the uh, watchers that haven't heard about truth yet, mm-hmm. it was also in the old Gwent. Truth, for example, Tibor had truth, so it could only um, get yeah. points if yeah, if your opponent has not passed. And the same keyword should be on Ispel of Hage and Drone. Yeah. yeah, it just stops you from. I feel like abusing a mechanic that's not even meant to be yeah. there, really. Um, Isabel's, you know, her. It was not meant to. Yeah, draw, yeah. She, she's meant to just, you know, you take the better card of the two and you give your opponent, you know. The it was not card. not meant to it, only draw one player. Yeah, exactly. Was, so that, and that hasn't been changed yet. And maybe it will at some point, but uh, yeah. Rot Tosser as well would be nice to see that reverted and given the truce. So those cards were kind of, uh, you know, dumped into the category with Spear and Nivellen and stuff like that. It's all. Cars that just are not well designed or, yeah, uh, if you know they're there, then you can play around them very easily. And if not, then they're a really annoying thing to deal with. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, I think, in terms of yeah. the stuff. If you missed anything, I think, maybe like Gas Con, but it's also an RNG card. Hmm. I guess um, one, more, one, one, one more thing to mention is Aridin as a leader. We yeah, yeah, identified him as maybe the one, yeah, I guess, problematic. The one leader, leader that could maybe be problematic. That's just because well, it's like, problematic. Yeah. yeah, I mean, right now even he's kind of a, yeah. a git to play against. You know, if you're uh, uh, playing at Slizzard or even Imrith, I guess you make him immune. He can just, you know, you give a powerful unit immunity, and it can potentially just win your whole round, regardless of what's happened up until that point, and regardless of what the opponent does in that round. It just feels a bit cheesy, and you know, not in the spirit of Gwent, which is you should always have a chance to win, right? If you play your cards right. Yeah. Um, not necessarily a problem as big as the others because you can always see your opponent has Eridan and that immunity available to them, but it's still yeah, a bit limiting in design space and yeah, we feel it should probably just not give immunity. Uh, maybe here's a cool idea. Eridan, he's the wild hunt guy. Maybe just spawn frost onto a row. There you go. Yeah. Gives some eight points. You can then introduce some weather synergy cards uh, like we had before. Maybe when you have frost on the board, you gain extra points on your giant or whatever you know what i mean um but yeah eridin can limit the design of cards in the future and even now it's exactly. a bit of an issue yeah. create some really you know 
do they have scorch for my slizzard or not stuff like that and it's just not yeah. fun for not really fun for anyone i think even if you're the the guy just dumping out points it's still a bit you know cheesy and cheap i think um yeah so... i can only agree to everything you said <laughs> perfect on, on everything yeah well there we go so i think that's pretty much all we have to say any closing remarks game king um no? not really i mean maybe no, no. i think we covered all the important cards um, which in our opinions or in my opinion have to get changed mm -hmm. and if they get changed then gwent will get even better yeah um, as it is right now yeah i mean it's worth... can change was really good already and they can make it even better yeah i mean it's not it's worth saying that these problems aren't even that you know they're not necessarily ruining our, our experience of the game a huge amount you know what i mean but uh it would be nice if they were changed at some point and i'm sure with yes. upcoming patches and you know the expansion then we'll be mm -hmm. pleasantly surprised hopefully with what happens but yeah those are our thoughts on uh, the problematic stuff that's still around in gwent uh, and maybe some solutions for that hope you enjoyed if you you know want to leave any feedback got any ideas yourself about what could be changed then feel free to share that in the comments thanks a lot for watching guys and we will see you next time bye